We was talking last week. God ain't here to fix the person you've been pretending to be. Amen. He's here to fix the person we really are. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Judy Roger, is this Miss Gloria right here? Yes. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. When the Holy Spirit says, Go, Miss Gloria, we're going to move. Amen. Yes, yes. Roger and Judy have brought this beautiful young lady. Not in faith and blessed on the rock. Not in faith in this old creature. But in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> that knee is going with this in the name of Jesus. Amen. That knee is going with this in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what I as a pastor long to see. See, we know about the laying on of hands and anointing. We're going to be in accordance with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Chad, what I'm waiting on is the Holy Ghost to blow the windows out. And God sovereignly begin to heal across the building. And all you hear is shouts of praise. And nobody's got to lay hands on it. That's the kind of glory that I'm looking for, people. Amen. Amen. We preached it last week in this hour for ministers. God's not dealing with anybody that wants to put their hands on His glory. That's right. Amen. Amen. Is there a man named Brandon in the house today? <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Brandon, we don't wait on Jesus. Jesus waits on us. Is this your family, sir? Praise the Lord. You beautiful children. He's all right. He said, get that sweaty good boy out there. It's okay. Y'all see these beautiful babies? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Praise. Yes. Glory to God. To tell you something, Brandon, you are amongst believers that celebrate men in the house of the Lord. It takes a grown man to get their babies up and come to church. Praise God for you. Thank you. There she is. That young lady got baptized. Where's Paisley at? She's, she's back there. We baptized two last week, as the Bible says to do. Salvation in the baptism in water. Amen. I run into Brandon down there. That young man came up with a heart this big. He said, I've been the blessed on the rock twice and I've sat in the back of my hands. He said, I want to meet this Jesus that you came from. Church, I want a round of applause for what the Holy Ghost is doing. God, we honor you and we praise you. And we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can I come to you, Brandon? That's okay. This man's got two babies. Hallelujah. Blessing, Jesus. I want to get on my knees, sir, because I want you to know how humbling it is to have you here this morning. I'm not anybody, but I know a God who is everything. Amen. What's these little feathers named? Excellent A. Double A. <laughs> been... Welcome to the Jesus Club. Amen. Amen. Hey. And I told you we're open here. Teresa was saying, the long and short of it, Jesus is the only that stands me. I heard a street preacher say, let me tell you something, young man and young lady. You're going to spend eternity, and you will. You understand this life is but a breath, but we get so gripped on it, don't we? Yep. The here and now, man, we focus on it. It feels so important. And from Genesis to Revelation, God is saying, keep your eyes on me. Yeah. Keep your eyes on me. Listen, when eternity hits, oh, yeah. see, all we can do, Ricky Cruz, is say the word eternity. Yeah. Anybody ever stood on the beach? <laughs> Thank God get you there. Okay. It's me. I wish I was standing on the floor. My point is you stand there and you look out at that water. 
And it looks like the, the ocean meets the sky, doesn't it? Guys, that's all you can grip in eternity. Yes. Praise God, Brandon. I'm here to tell you Amen. that when Jesus comes for his church and for his babies, you are on board, sir. Amen. 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 And I tell you something, I told God, sir, if you're crazy, well, we're all crazy too. Amen. 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 God is exactly who he says he is. Yes, Amen, brother. You know what? We're just going to keep following the Lord here. The Bible says that Satan is overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. testimony. There's a young lady here. Help me, Holy Spirit. I've said it before. To watch God work, Miss Gloria. You've seen God move many times in your life, haven't you? I can see it on your face. Glory to God. God is restoring families in a way that I've never seen it right here. Yep. He's restoring them and all of you are part of it. Amen. Amen. This young lady has been saying for months, very young pastor, I feel like it's time to share my testimony. Can we glorify the name of Jesus this morning? Yes, sir. Would y'all please welcome Miss Whitney? Please come on. We honor you. We love you. Yes. She's going to work this, this microphone. I'm going to go sit back here with Kirk and all. Praise God. Amen. So. <laughs> Can somebody say praise the name of Jesus? Amen. We celebrate with you, with you. What a beautiful family up here. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Did I just miss Children's Church? I get ahead of myself. There's folks back there if you, anybody needs. You guys don't pay any attention to me. The Children's Church, we've got folks back there taller if anybody needs any help. Father, we thank you for that testimony. God, may your hand be heavenly feet upon Whitney's family as they go forward serving you, God. And everything that you've got planned for them, every open door, God, may they walk through with the peace of the Holy Spirit and your confidence that your destiny will be fulfilled over them. We give you all the honor and the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Let's jump into this word, church. By the way, we're going to be baptizing a few more right back there on the back row today. Praise God. I read this this week and I thought I would share it with you. There's a lot of truth in it. We live in a day where clowns are entertaining the goats instead of pastors feeding the sheep. We're going somewhere this morning, Stu. Last week we were talking about Romans 8, 28, and we'll get there. This, this message is kind of all over the place, but listen, God's got things to say, Billy Thompson. To those who came for the word, may they receive it today. It may be for some of you, it may be for many of you. Some of you are like, I'm at the absolute bottom. Others are seeing the daylight about to come out. But listen, God's raising up people in the church. For those who are having trouble, to have somebody to look at and mentor and say, if God can do it for you, he can do it for me. Amen? That's what that story's about with me. Praise God. Would y'all repeat after me? If God allowed it, he has purpose in it. It's hard for us to see. That's what we were talking about last week, John. Things that happen to us, and we're like, sure, are, are, are you certain, God, that all things are going to work out for my good? Hard to see that when you're behind bars or your kids are out of your home. Yeah. Come on. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work for the good of those who love God. And listen, I'm here to tell you this morning that with that understanding and that faith that God is exactly who he says he is, it is time to move from a place of stress to a place of strength. Corey, they're not, they're not. Listen to this, this. It's time to move from a place of stress to a place of strength. Well, that sounds good. Preacher, how in the world do we get there? I'm glad you asked. Woo. Stop asking Father to decrease the stress in your life. And ask him to increase his strength in you. Yeah. 
Do you know stress comes from change? And change, family of God, is absolutely inevitable. You know what? From the day you're born, change starts, doesn't it? Studies have shown that every time there's a spike in your stress, it's because of a changing in your life. Who am I preaching to this morning? Psychology tells us this. Anytime you get a new job, stress follows. Anybody goes through a divorce, stress follows. Anytime your children and later in life may move out of your house, change comes and stress follows. Change is inevitable. Any of all, all of these things can bring stress. But what happens when seasons change? Y'all need to hear me this morning. Whew. See, you can't wear your summer clothes in winter, can you? When the change of seasons is going to come a change of garments. You're going to have to change some things. I see some smiles out there. Because somebody's starting to hear where we're going. You're going to have to change some things stepping into the next season. Yeah. Heard Gary Jennings say, Richard, with a new level comes a new devil. Amen. Blame where God's calling his church to go. There's going to be bigger giants in the land that God's called you to occupy. But if you will understand that God goes before you and behind you and who you are, that his promises are yes and amen, giants are going to fall. Strongholds are going to fall. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when the seasons change, we get the sniffles. Your allergies kick in. We have to change our wardrobe. Somebody say, change my garment. Change Jacob and Joseph knew about garments. See some smiles. Listen to me. Whenever I'm preaching a message, if we started off on Jacob, we would be here till next year. Yep. If we started off on Joseph... You can preach the trials that Joseph went through probably the rest of your natural born days. The Holy Spirit just keeps giving insight. If you don't know the story of Joseph, I challenge you to go home today, Google Joseph, New King James Version, and let the Lord begin to speak to you. I'm saying all that to say this. We don't have time this morning to delve into absolute every depth of it. Let's go to Genesis 37, 3 through 5. Now Israel loved Joseph. Israel, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Whew. God's about to do some real change in some people's life who's ready to change with the Lord in this season. Yeah, come on, come on. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers... They hated him and could not speak peacefully with him. Anybody ever experienced that in your life? Whoo, let me tell you about people, church. They want you to be blessed, but they don't want you to be too blessed. See, because when God takes full control of your life and you become too blessed in their eyes, what they really mean is they can't keep their hands on you and control you anymore because God's leaving your steps. They hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. By the way, if you don't know that people are watching your life yeah. and they're seeing the little changes in you, yeah. they are. Yeah. They are, aren't they, Street? Amen. Sometimes they just kind of side-eye you a little bit. Yeah. What's new about that person? It's because you've been in the presence of God and change is only the beginning. Amen? Amen. Right. Right. Now, Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. Listen, the haters are always going to hate, Teresa. Amen? Don't worry about what the world is saying. Worry about what God is saying to you in this season. And where he's leading you as you acknowledge him in some things. As you acknowledge him in all things. Amen? Miss Floyd, can I preach this morning? Is it okay? Praise the Lord. Jacob, the father, was giving Joseph a beautiful garment. Everybody around him got jealous. Let's stop right there. Don't be that person. That's right. When God begins to pour into others, you don't know the prayers that's went over them. 
You don't know the fasting in their prayer closet and the heartbreak they've been through. You better praise God and celebrate. And if they're coming up, you're coming up behind them. Amen. Anybody ever question God? Come on. Man, God, what they do? What they do that you bless them so much? Don't worry about them. So many times we think we know what we need, don't we? Well, Lord, if I could just win that lottery, he said, you're not the best of your life. You ain't enough money to ever get you out of it. <laughs> and his betrayers, his brothers, oh, man, brought back the garment that his father gave him, torn and bloody, to fool Jacob into believing that Joseph had been eaten alive. God had a place of power reserved for Joseph. But he was going to have to hit rock bottom before he rose to the top. Whitney, do you know about rock bottom? Yeah. I told you all my testimony many times. Dumb was not going to sit still until God said, yes, you are. But listen, we get so down when rock bottom comes. Listen, there's a time. To sit and be still in the presence of the Lord and understand that he's still in control. He is still doing things. But see, when you build a house, you're going to have to drive some nails. When something needs to fit, you're going to have to get the sandpaper and buff that thing off. In the down seasons, when God is doing the hammering of nails and the sandpaper, he is preparing you for the promised land that he's going to get you to. How many times in our life are we whining when God's trying to birth something? I said it before, if God was dependent upon men to further the human race, he'd be like, well, we're all going to die in just a few short years. You women, God makes you something incredible in what your bodies can do in producing life. Amen? Amen. Joseph is going to have to hit rock bottom. And here's where I'm going to start talking to somebody. How many of you under the sound of my voice today have had your garments stolen and your dreams shattered? Come on, just when you think, God, I finally arrived. Somebody tries to lay hands on what God has already spoken over you, and it comes through words of doubt. The devil tries to use shame against us, amen? How many of you know Satan's a liar this morning? And I feel like I need to share this with somebody. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Listen to me. When the attack of the enemy comes, he is coming to measure your responses. You know why poker players are good? Because they can have the worst hand at the table and smile and nod, baby. Yeah. They might have all aces. They may have a pair of twos. Yeah. Amen? But they've learned to keep that poker face on. Listen, when the devil comes in your face and starts flaunting all this, you're going to fall. You'll never succeed. You keep that poker face of the faith of God upon you and don't let him measure your response. Keep standing. Keep believing. Amen? Let me tell you something. I didn't even know we're going here, but I'm going to follow the Lord. Satan does not know what's going on in your future. He doesn't. You take the book of Job. Satan comes before God. He says, let me try. I'll tell you what was happening. He was wrong, Stu. He thought he knew what would happen. He said, let me at him. I'm going to break him. God knew what he had spoken over him. He had the faith. You hear about the faith of Job. He comes back and he said, well, you didn't let me have enough rain. God said, take everything you will but his life. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The devil can't just come and snuff you out. Everything that hits you, child of God, has got to go through your father first. Amen. Do you understand that? Ricky, the devil can't just show up in your life and cause chaos. He had to ask permission. And if God allowed it, he's got a purpose for his glory. Amen. <laughs> he wants to measure your responses. Somebody say poker face. How many people when I said poker face? Somebody went to put, put poker face. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I told y'all we're losing free here. I seen a video one time said poker face was called butter face. But butter face. And that's what I made up. God's about to restore garments. Come on, church. I need you to hear, God. God is about to restore garments because the change of seasons is upon us. 
Reginald, what are you talking about? We ain't even hit August yet. I'm here to tell you that the shift has occurred once again. Hallelujah. I'm looking for somebody to raise their faith. Amen. That's how it goes, brother. Raise your faith, church. Listen to me. There are things breaking loose right now that y'all in this church have been praying for for a long time. And I want an eight-second praise break to say, God, we thank you. We see your mighty hand in your heart. And it's all in the beginning, Jesus. It's all in the beginning. Amen. All praise and glory to God. Amen and amen. You can't give too much thanks to Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. Father is moving now in ways that we have been praying for for years. Yes. Mr. Payton, what number did you come up with, sir? 126 souls in Amity, Arkansas got up to hear a young lady's testimony to the glory of God, to see people get their life for Jesus, to see God do exactly what he said I'm going to do in Amity, Arkansas. Amen. They came from a long we'll way. We'll take that. They came a long way. Jasmine, I need you to find my sister. Yes. You tell her to text Kenny and Linda Hall and tell them to begin to pray. <laughs> tell them to begin to pray. Miss Gloria, praise team, prayer team, come with me if you would. Thank you, Father. I'm coming to you, honey. You sit right there. You sit right there and be comfortable. Sit right there, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, I'm asking the believers in this church to begin to pray. Yes. See, the Bible says that where there's two or more gathered in my name, that the presence of the living God will be there also. If you believe it, would you say amen this morning? Yes. Yes. Jesus. God, we are in faith agreement believing right now upon your word that healing is the children's bread, that the stripes that were taken upon your back, God, were for our healing, a covenant healing. So today we stand in our faith in you and on the written word of God, Father, asking for healing, that these eyes be renewed, that there will be a testimony, a confession of God's mercy and his power and goodness over Miss Gloria, that everything that the enemy has tried to stuff out her vision be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Father, we break any generational curse that battles her health in the name of Jesus. We come against the hand of the enemy that afflicts her flesh. We speak the name of Jesus over her and plead the blood of Jesus. God, we ask you to restore everything that she needs restored. Father, you know. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be. Jesus' name, let it be. Father, everything that hinders her in Jesus' name, we speak until it can be made right, manifest through the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, for hearts that are broken in this church this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Not the physical, God, but the spiritual heart of some are broken here. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way in ministry and prepare the breach that the devil's trying to bring against your children in Jesus' name. Make them whole. Make them whole, Father. That's who he is. Amen and amen. Guys, be in agreement. Pray. We're going to let the Lord minister right over there until he's done. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. There's another church in full agreement with right now as this prayer team is praying in the hot springs.
for this young lady's healing. We thank you for the healing, God, that's already on its way. That she will have a testimony of your mercy and goodness and kindness. That you will use in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Listen to me, strongholds are falling. Strongholds are falling and the captive are being set free. That's what you've begun to see and it is all Jesus, Ricky Cruz. It's all Jesus, amen? Amen. Amen, I'm loving this guy. Praise God. I'll tell you something. Amen, he does have it figured out. Hey, y'all give the Holy Spirit a round of applause. He's going to do it. Told y'all this before. People say, oh, that don't happen no more. Oh, listen, preacher, the Holy Spirit left with the apostles. What Bible did you read? <laughs> I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, you'll do these things that I've done and more. Yeah. But you're going to have to step out in faith and do it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's get back in this word. Genesis 37, 23 through 24. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers. Boy, I'm going to have to pause this thing. Listen. There's some hard conversations have to happen in families and in the kingdom of God sometimes. You know? Billy Thompson, you had to give some hard conversations over the years. Listen. You're going to have to know that people are approaching you in love. They're approaching you with the truth of the gospel, and you will receive it or you will reject it. It's up to you. But some things have got to be addressed. Amen? But not everybody's going to be happy when you come to them. You leave that between them and the Lord. Don't you worry about it. Jesus told the disciples, he said, you go and you preach what I've told you to, and if they don't receive you, you wipe the dust off your feet and beat it. Okay? Amen? Amen. Came to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water. And I believe the Lord would have to tell you this. I don't know who this is for, but some of you have not only been bound and betrayed by those around you, you feel like you're in the bottom of a pit and you've been cast into a spiritually dry place. God is about to begin the restoration for those who will receive him and heed him in this day. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Some of you felt bound and betrayed and in a dry place. It may seem like the enemy has stolen that which Father has given you. Jacob thought that Joseph was dead. Let's retract for a minute. This is his favorite son. The son of his old age. Amen? And his father puts a new garment on and said, this is my God. By the way, if you go a little further, you're going to say, well, why didn't he go with the older brothers? Because he couldn't trust as far as he could throw them. Anybody ever had anybody you couldn't trust? Mm-hmm. Come on. Amen. But God put his favor in the favor of Israel and Jacob upon Joseph and clothed him with his garment. And his brothers were jealous. They didn't like it. And they was tired of his yap and all the dreams and things that God was using him. He said, you know what? We ain't going to kill him. Well, we're going to sell him right into slavery. Thanks for that, bro. Right? See how lucky you are, Richmond? See how lucky I am? I saw you a long time ago. You know what they give me? Nothing. Some of the things that you've given up for dead, new life is coming. That garment of many colors, listen to me, that was given to Joseph that his brothers took, that garment never came back to him. Stop looking at the old church. Stop looking at the familiar and what you think you know. And start looking for what God says in a new season. It's time to change your clothes. Amen? Garment of many colors name never came back to Joseph because it was time to change. Stop expecting the old garment to come back around and get ready to step into the new one. 
It's time for a seasonal spiritual shift. Listen to this. When God brings a new season, we often say, well, it's an attack of the enemy. Oh. Yeah. It never looks like we think. We was talking about change last week, Tiffany. God said, hey, I'm going to call you over here, but you're going to spend 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness, no food, no water, okay? You'd never go. You right. said, you better call somebody else. Huh? That's right. Stay with me, church. Anybody got the time it is? Three minutes. Right on time. Amen. <laughs> Listen to this. God created seasons. And they are all remarkably different one from the other. Don't be looking in the summer for what you know ain't going to happen until winter. That's right. Huh? Who built a fire in the middle of summer saying, hey, let's sit around the fire. It's a dog on hot. You can't hardly breathe. It's not a season for building fires. That's in the fall and in the winter, amen? amen. Guys, when change comes, you've got to step out of what summer was after the familiar and start rechanging your garments for where God is calling you in a new season. Amen. amen. Yep. Listen to this. Genesis 37, 32, and 35. Oh, my goodness. Watch how the devil will use people. Don't nobody get offended in here. By the way, I pray that we all reach a level of maturity that you just can't offend us no more. Amen. Come on. One of the greatest bumper stickers I've ever seen in my life said, I'm offended that you're offended. Just stop. They sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to his father and said, we found this. Do you know whether it's your son's tunic or not? Like they didn't know that they took it off that boy, sold him into slavery. Listen, the devil's a liar, and he will use people to come and try to sell you a false truth. Amen. You better have some discernment in this season. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Do you know whether this is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him without doubt. Look at that. Bought right into the lie that the devil brought. He said, without a doubt, my son is dead. Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes. It's another way of saying he was tearing his garments. Put sackcloth on his waist and he mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted and he said... For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. How many times, Blaine, has the devil come and tried to sell us a bill of goods? And we're so quick to buy in it. And we say, God, that thing's dead. There's no way you can resurrect it. That part of my destiny must be gone. I'll start seeing if I can help you, Lord, and figure it out for myself. And God said, no, I'm still God. Stand on my promises and the truth of my word. Amen? But that was the end of Joseph, right? His father believes he's dead. He might as well be dead. But his brothers had sold him into slavery. Now, let's jump forward. And some of you folks on the sound of my voice are fixing to jump forward. Amen. 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 I wish I had somebody to receive it. Oh, God's going to promote me. Praise God. God's about to move some people forward. Amen. 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 Listen to this. You jump to Genesis 41, 44, same book of the Bible, a few chapters down. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's head. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot. Let's pause the story. My man went from being bound and sold out by his brothers in a dry place that God said, I got news for you. I want to put you through some trials because it's a time of testing, but then I want to elevate you to second in command and give you power and give you authority. And it's going to be used to provide for the same family that cuts you off. Amen. Oh, somebody get that this morning. If you think you're the shame, the laughing stock of the black sheep of the family, you keep seeking, you keep knocking. We serve a God of restoration, and you'll be preaching to them a whole lot. Amen. And he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. Listen to this. 
They cried out before him, bow the knee. Bow the knee. I challenge you to go home and read the story of Joseph. He had a dream. And he said, we were all gathering wheat. And I was in the middle. And when I gathered the wheat, y'all were gathered, but all y'all bowed down to me. His brother said, oh, you must think you're somebody, huh? He said, I had another dream. His father said, what was it? He said, same thing, except for you and mama was in it, and y'all was bowing to me too. Little did they know, God had shown him. There's going to come a famine in the land. Listen, it may be through food. It may be through a lack of the word of God and love of loved ones around you. But when the famine comes and God has elevated you, there's going to be others looking to you. Praise God. For advice and saying, if God can do it with him, he can do it with me. The Lord was showing him. They all cried bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, how about this? And without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Oh. I'm talking to the overlooked and the undervalued this morning. Amen. Somebody say new garments. Somebody say new purpose. Somebody say new authority. You're not done, child of God. You're just at the beginning. We've been looking at the account of Moses for several weeks, but it's time to shift. Yeah. It's time to shift to the time of Joshua. Yeah. How must Joshua have felt? Anybody ever felt insignificant? Come on. Amen. Yeah. Felt this morning. Pretty much every Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. If you'll be honest with yourself. Yeah. This dude had to follow in the footsteps of Moses. My man carried a stick to part seas. In his work, God brought plagues and the angel of death to strike the first one. It'd be like a musician. They're like, hey, man, oh, Elvis Presley's going to be open for you tonight. Who? Elvis Presley. All you got to do is follow him. You want me to follow Elvis Presley? That's how Joshua must have felt with Moses. Yeah. Lord, how do I fill these shoes? Listen to this. Hard act to follow, but the same God that Moses served was about to go before Joshua, the son of Nun. For the same purpose, same purpose, different season. He calls Joshua and tells him, where Moses failed, you're going to succeed. Joshua 1, 5 and 6, listen to this. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. The same God that led Moses is going to lead Joshua, and it's the same God that's going to lead me and you. Are you ready for the name of this sermon? If, if we will allow him to. See, he has only two letters out of the alphabet. Wow. I told y'all about the lady. The angel showed up after her fast and prayed. She said they'd lost everything. Even the cows were dying. Old dust rolled out in Kansas. She said, I looked across and there was a whirlwind coming. She said, you ever seen a dust devil? I'm not talking about a tornado, I'm talking about a dust devil. Who's with me? Yeah. She said this thing began to spin and bother and weave and it got right to her doorstep and it just stopped. And she said there was a man in the middle of it. She said, God has heard your cry and he has sent me to tell you your husband will live and not die. And God's going to begin restoring talking about the cattle. And she said, listen to me. She said, if God does what you said, and she said the angel's face turned stern towards her. And he said, there are no gifts with Father. Woo! If he said it's going to happen, Bill, it's not to happen. That's powerful, church. We talk about faith just a hot second. There's a man whose last name was Mueller or Muller. Like a Smith Wigglesworth type man of God. Just a mountain of faith. Smith Wigglesworth used to go to the factories. And God told him, what do you want me to do? He said, just go. What do you want me to say? Nothing. You want me to just go and stand there? He said, that's right. 
But the anointing on the man's life, he would go and stand. And people would just begin weeping and walking towards him and say, what, is, what are you doing here? God sent me here to lead you to Jesus. He didn't have to preach a word for the anointing and the power of God upon him. This man Muller said, I was sitting at the dinner table. Kids hungry. Done all I knew to do. He said, kids, join my hands. And him and the wife and kids joined he said, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meal that you've provided tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. The wife said, honey, there's no food on the table. And at that time, a knock came on the door. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about. Amen. Expecting God to do it. Listen to me. God stands in the ready to have to do all part two, amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Moses wouldn't have led anybody out of Egypt had he not walked towards the burning bush. We're getting ready to go home. Somebody's about to move from man to milk and honey. Amen. You have put in the work. You have put in the prayer. And the Lord says it's harvest time and get ready. I don't know who that's for, but I hope somebody is overjoyed and bubbling and just ain't jumped up and that young thing to find right now. For somebody who's been down and out. God said, I heard you. Exodus 16, 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them. Whenever they will walk in my life or not. Let me stop right there for those of you who don't know what man it was. They were whining about Egypt. Blah, blah, blah. You better feed me because that's what people do. God said, I'm going to provide you bread. But here's the deal. Y'all do know God's a God of stipulations a lot of times. I will, if you will, yeah. accept the salvation act as a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Get this. See, it's human nature to go out, Christian, and be like, well, instead of a loaf of bread, I'm going to take five loaves of bread, so I ain't got to move tomorrow. Who's with me? God said, don't you take more than your portion. And those who did, it stank and turned to worms. Yeah. Why would God do that? I thought he was God of overflow. He's a God and you better do as I'm telling you to do. And if I provided you for today, I'm going to provide you tomorrow. Shock it for you. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Listen to this. You get a certain quote every day that I may test them. Whether they will walk in my law or not. The season of manna is ending. See, manna came at the word of the Lord. It was provision from heaven to sustain his people in a time of testing. Not all were satisfied. You ever heard you can't please all the people all the time? Honey, it's hard to please some of the people some of the time. You better worry about pleasing Jesus and let the rest of it be God, okay? Listen to this. Not all were satisfied, but some were. Some were appreciative, and some were faithful, and some were thankful. Even though they weren't there yet, they were holding on to the promise of the promised land. I'm here to remind you, press on, family, that the promise is in hand. It's a change of seasons, Todd. Joshua 5, 11 and 12, we're fixing to go home. And they ate of the produce of the land. On that day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain. On the very same day, then the manna ceased. On the day after they had eaten the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate of the food of the land of Canaan that year. The season of the promised land is here. God is restoring you to a place as if it never happened. Y'all must have it good. I don't need no restoring. I've been good. God's about to restore somebody to a place as if it never happened. Amen. And listen, this whole sin thing, Mary Ed, the Bible tells us that Jesus separates your sin as far as the east is from the west. You know why? 
He didn't send them kind of in the same direction in case I needed to look over and see if I remember what Billy Thompson did. God's not trying to remember your sin. How many times have we prayed and asked forgiveness and God's going, what are you talking about? Yeah, come on. See, you talked to me about this five years when you were broken and you said, God, I repent and forgive me. And then the devil comes up and shakes you like, oh, Lord, I can't believe I've done that. He's like, what are you talking about? See, that's man that won't forgive you. Jesus will. Amen. It's over and done, son. Praise God. Last but not least, Richmond, how can you say these things and put faith? Yeah, I believe. Seeing the fruit. Yeah. See, when you see the fruit, Johnny, you don't have to guess. You can count on that what the word says is going to happen. Kyle Burnett is happening. 123 souls in the middle of summer in Amity, Arkansas. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Some of you have been struggling and fighting things for so long that when the change of season comes, we're still trying to wear our shorts and our tank top. Amen? We're still trying to be comfortable in our own skin and where we think we should be. But when that change of season comes, it's real change, guys. This last word says it's a time of providence. Let go. And accept your deliverance. Amen. Oh, Amen. Let go and accept your deliverance. Kirk Doll, where he's at right there, and I see him right back there. He said, Richmond, I got a word from you. Can I see you in your office? I know Kirk Doll pretty well, right? I thought he's in the inside of me. I see big old tears well up in that man's eyes, and he opened up his Bible. He said, God's had you and you in my heart. We've been praying over you. And he opened up that scripture and he said, Father wants you to be reminded to cast all of your burdens upon you. Thank you, God. Amen. The simple word in obedience and the truth of the gospel of God being made manifest through the power of the spoken word. Amen. Amen. Let go and accept your deliverance, church. I don't know who that's for, but somebody's sitting back there. God's hurt you. Y'all yeah. understand one more came to the kingdom of God today? Amen. 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 Don't y'all believe I know friends of being dad back there. By the way, he's out of the room. He can probably hear me. I hope he can. What a grown man to bring them babies. Come on, huh? To bring those babies. To come in and say, I want to give my life to Jesus, and I ain't a bit ashamed. That's a grown man. Well, that's how I look out. Look, you keep walking in that kind of humility. God will use you. God will use you. You know, as this church grows, God's going to begin to raise leadership. The see, the cream's going to rise to the top. And some of y'all are hearing me and you're thinking, boy, I'm glad I come visiting today. Others are thinking, boy, I wish I'd stay in bed. <laughs> I hope the word of the Lord has spoken to you today. Yes. Let me tell you something. This Bible is the truth. God is who he said he is. And thank y'all for not standing up and walking out. And I said we're going to.